Oh, man. That's embarrassing. <laughs> Hey, what's good, y'all? I'm Matthew Aran. Um, uh, and back playing more Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney about an hour after I recorded, uh, about an hour and a half after I did the last one. Uh, here I am again. And uh, I just realized something I forgot to. <laughs> I mean, it's not that it's a big deal. It's a big deal for me in editing. But I forgot to, like, sync up the last one. Uh, so the commentary, like, lines up with the video. You know, because, you know, since I'm recording the commentary separately, you know, I, um, I, before I always start talking, I always uh, do like two, one, two, one, so I know exactly where the commentary is supposed to go. So that's a bit embarrassing, but probably, hopefully something that you guys won't notice uh, too much. But anyway, yeah, today, uh, or right now, we're going to the trial section of episode two, Turnabout Sisters. So... Let's do it. <clears throat> we decided to take on Maya's case, and I already saved there. Um, what's 1338? 13 hours? 1300 hours? But yeah, um, September 7th, District Court, 10 a.m. You know the deal. And there he is. Court, court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Fay. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. <clears throat> That's like the best. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edgeworth. I better not show any signs of weakness today, or he'll be on me in an instant. Well, I wouldn't... Oh. God damn it. I just spilled some water. I was about to say I wouldn't mind that. But anyway... Oh no, I'm turning into Luke again. Anyway, thank you, Your Honor. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence that she committed this murder, and we have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. Already starting. Already starting. Let's begin, then. If we may call our first witness, Your Honor, the prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. Ugh. All right, it's the cop. Actually, he's a detective, not a cop, but... Name and profession. Sir, my name is Detective Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, down at the precinct sir. Please describe for us the details of this murder. Let me use this floor map uh, of the office to explain. Uh, yes, give me that. Was found by the window here. And the cause of death... Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir. Murder weapon was a statue of the Thinker found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hand, sir. Oh, they're still they're still calling it a statue. <laughs> I guess so. Now, detective. Immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay, who was on the scene of the crime. Can you tell me why? Hard evidence that, that she did it. Please testify to the court about this hard evidence. Yeah. Something's here. Th something here is hard, and it's not the evidence. Okay, I'm going to stop. <laughs> Actually, okay. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately, immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. Why? We had a witness describing her. With his account. Very moment of the murder, okay. Hmm. Very moment, you say? Very well, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross examination. Okay. Cross examine what? I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Whoosh. Whoa. She threw something at me. When my sister couldn't find any contradictions in a witness's testimony, she would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. Always slips up and says something wrong. It worked lots of times. <laughs> I should have expected Maya would know something of her sister's tricks. Yeah, so something of the matter. 
Uh, no, Your Honor. I'd like to begin my cross-examination. <laughs> yeah, so this is the beginning of uh, pressing, which I've been doing. Technically, I've been doing before, but hey. Let's do it. Who did you say you got a call from? Hey, Bao, don't play dumb. <laughs> hey, Bao, don't play dumb. You know who? The call was from a customer at the Gatewater Hotel right across the crime scene. Please continue. Two people there already. How long would you say it took eh, between you receiving the call and your arrival at the scene of the crime? I'd say it was about three minutes. <laughs> Damn. Our motto this month is quick response. That's how I got there before the killer got away. Indeed. So tell us who the two people you found on the scene were. <sighs> Damn. Three minutes, though? Like, seriously, three minutes? Like, even in a city where everything is close together? Uh, Phoenix, your dumb act will only get you so far. With her funky hippie clothes and your spiky hair, you do stand out like like suspicious people on a crime scene. Well, he does have a point about her. He is pretty unmistakable. Okay, but did you, did you have to come for my hair like that? Like, seriously, why do you have to do me like that? Come on. Um, immediately arrested Miss Faye. Why is that? What's your reason? Oh, why? <laughs> yeah, so there was nothing there, like, seriously. Hold on just one second. Yeah? I, if I heard correctly, you said you arrested her because you had hard evidence she did it, right? Did I say that? You did say it. You said it. <laughs> he even Edgeworth's agreeing. Even Edgeworth is agreeing with him. Exactly. What about this suspicious woman in pink? Uh, pink screen was hard evidence. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, something here is hard in... It's not the evidence. <laughs> and she sure isn't pink, pal. She kind of is. Yeah. <laughs> That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than their claims? Hmm. I guess prison can have its advantages. Yes. <clears throat> uh -uh. Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor, sir. Oh, let's hear your testimony again. Hard evidence. Uh, let's see, after you're securing a suspect, I examined the, the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on the piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. The blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before he died, the victim wrote the killer's name. No, she did not. That's my hard evidence. <laughs> Before we begin the cross-examination, cross I have a question for you, Detective. Your Honor. Why did you tell someone about this, about this final piece of evidence the first time? I imagine I'm saying that fast like that. It's like, why the hell did you tell about the final piece of evidence the first time? I know, I'm real very stuff I got about, Your Honor. Try to be more careful. Huh. Very well, the defense may begin discussing me. He immediately calms down. <clears throat> Examine the crime scene. Crime scene okay? Don't, th don't jump the gun on me, pal. Just listen, I'm getting to the good part. I found a memo written with a piece of paper. Just because you found it next to the body doesn't mean the victim wrote it. Ho, 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 then who did write it, smarty pants? Who, um... <laughs> I did, Miss May. The killer. The killer? Anyone can see that. Oh, you're saying the killer with her wrote her own name. Buddy, please. She was framed. If that's the case, where's your evidence? 
Uh, well, I got... Well, well, hang on a second. I got your evidence coming up. That's a bit later, though. Bit of a tall order than you. Those without evidence shouldn't open their mouths, Mr. Wright. Tell us what you, uh, what was written on the memo you found. Okay. Do you have proof it was Mia that wrote that? Of course I do, pal. Sounded pretty confident. <laughs> this is not good. This is not good. Lab test results, yeah. Um, uh, well, what kind? I hear they take the, um, little bits in the blood, the, um, hemo, hemo, hermo, goblins, hobgob, um, uh, hermogoblin, bobbin. <laughs> I refuse to testify on this matter, pal. Uh, yes, that was quite clear. <laughs> well, even the judge is roasting gum. <laughs> uh, thanks, pal. I mean, your honor, sir. Uh, yeah. I'll look forward to your next evaluation, as should you. Oh. <laughs> that was... <laughs> yeah, that was a crap and a half right there. <laughs> Blood coming from the victim's finger. On which hand was the, was the bloody finger, detective? The right hand. She was right-handed. Okay. Before he died, the victim wrote the killer's name. So, yeah, this is the one. I mean, I, I, I kind of stalled there, but yeah, this is the one we want. Um, death was instantaneous. Yeah, there's one thing I want you to clarify for me. You say that the victim, Mia Fey, wrote this note? That she was accusing the defendant, Maya Fey? That's, where, that's really what you're saying. Of course you wrote it. Who else could have? You have it backwards, detective. The victim is the only person who, ab who absolutely could not have written it. For... This is a report uh, from your department, detective. Immediate death to, due to a blow from a blunt object. He died immediately. But... No butting your way out of this one. Bum, 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 bum. Ba, 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 ba. The defense has a point. Objection, Mister Wright. I beg your pardon, but when did it? When exactly did you obtain the autopsy report? Um. The day after. <laughs> the day before. Right? Am I really gonna rat gum you out? I mean, uh, let's go. It was day after the murder. That autopsy report is outdated, Your Honor. Oh, come on now. Don't start this now. Don't start this whole meme, Edgeworth. A second autopsy report was uh, performed yesterday at my request. Death was almost immediate due to a blow from a blunt object, but there is still a possibility that victim was for several minutes after the blow. I guess. Come on now. See? Damn you, Edgeworth. Damn you, you traitor. I should have known had, uh, I should have known you'd have something up your sleeve. Why, Mr. Wright, you look shocked. Something you want to say? You're a sham, Edgeworth. The detective's a sham. I'm a sham. Um, yeah, you're a sham. You can't do that. You can't just do that. I've heard there's nothing... Oh, we're just going... <laughs> I've heard there's nothing you won't do to get your verdict. What reason could you possibly have to, uh, to request a second autopsy report? <laughs> the defense will refrain from personal attacks on the prosecution. I mean, is he wrong? I guess that is. Say what you will, the evidence in this report is undeniable. Ha! 
Hotopsy report updated. Yep. Obvious conclusion, yes. Okay. This is good. The prosecution would like to call the next witness. This poor, innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. Let the, let the witness, Miss April May, to the, take the stand. Yeah, that's just what I wanted to hear. A witness your name, please. April May, at your service. <laughs> <laughs> Look at her back sprite. <laughs> An introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. The witness will refrain from wanton winking. Oh, yes, Your Honor. You know the judge was... Never mind. He's already captured the heart of every man in the courtroom. Tell us where you were on the night of September the 5th when the murder occurred. Uh, gee, I was like in my hotel room. Oh, I'm making her sound like a valley girl. I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from the Fanco Law Offices. That's right, big boy. Ah, uh, all right, what do you have to say? It was like nine o'clock at night. I looked out my window, you know. And then, ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. But the girl, she caught up to her and, and she hit her. Then the woman with the long hair, she kind of slumped. The end, that's all I saw. Every little bitsy witsy. <laughs> stop saying that. And stop winking at me. I see. It is a remarkably solid testimony. I don't... Alright, so we're... <laughs> I was gone for like 17 minutes. Um, or more like 13 minutes, because... Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, solid testimony. I don't see... I don't see any trouble to witness any. Wait, Your Honor. What about my cross-examination? I thought the witness testimony now, just now was quite firm, don't you think? <laughs> I know what else. Miss Faze, I understand you were Miss Faze's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well, her cow cowardly way of finding tiny faults and perfectly good testimonies. Oh, if they're perfectly good testimonies, the tiny faults shouldn't be there. How dare you? Yes, I will. If only because I have a feeling Edgeworth doesn't want me to. <sighs> you know, it's like the definition of perfect. <sighs> Never mind. It was like 9 o'clock when, when I looked out the window, you know? Why did you do that? Why did you do that? Why? Like, why what? Why did you look out the window? You were expecting to see something? Well, uh, gee. That's it? She can't get out of this question that easily. I sort of, you know... I had a feeling. <sighs> Maybe I should press her a little harder on this one. Yeah, I had a feeling. Surely you must have had a reason to look out your window at that time of night. Mr. Wright, I will not have you badgering my witness. I mean... <laughs> yeah, yeah, stop him! Oh. You have been warned. Poor girl, what about poor me? <laughs> and my poor hair. <sighs> I oh, I guess why she looked at the... I can't believe it. A woman with long hair being attacked. <clears throat> that was Mia Fey. Slender, sort of. Uh, well, some people might say pretty, if that's your thing. Your thing? 
That girl was the mousy girl. Mousy girl. I don't know why that adjective gets me like mousy girl. Huh? Well, you know, she had a girlish physique. Women know these things. Look, I just know, okay? With a short girlish figure, testimony is bulletproof, Your Honor. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I feel like I should back off of this one. Sometimes it'll ask you that. Sometimes it'll ask you, should I press for, should I uh, press further on this one or back off? And um, the con the consequences on that vary from uh, statement to statement. But anyway, dodged one side and ran away. She dodged, dodged what? Well, the attack. She got up to her and she hit her. How did you know it was my client? Well, I, gee, first of all, she had a girl's physique. Yeah, I already said that. And secondly, she was, she was small. <sighs> hmm. Let's see what happens. Hold on a minute. That testimony stinks. It stinks. I'm willing to bet that. You're lying. Are you telling the truth? I don't know what's going to happen here. Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? I'm clueless about this, I mean. If you had really witnessed my client, Maya Fay, you would have noticed her clothes before noting her a good point. <laughs> I was wondering when he was going to bring that up. Please. Ah. Huh. Okay, apparently I don't remember this game as much as I thought I did. No one works, wears clothes like this on a daily basis except her. Kind of a sick burn on her, isn't it? And I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks uh, far from normal to me. However, the witness's testimony mentions neither neither of those things. Okay. Testament is bogus, man. Still, we don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, Your Honor, because I was there. And so, Detective Gumshoe... Rawr. What are you trying to say to me, you mean lawyer? I saw what I saw. I just didn't think of the trifling little details were necessary. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl, I promise. Ugh. Now, we're, we're not at the worst of that yet. Just wait until AA3. Okay. I did see everything, I did. The victim and the woman dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with that weapon, I saw it. That clock, um, the statue clock, the thinker, I think. Well, th does the accur accuracy of my report uh, not startle you? <laughs> blah, 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 blah. I see, uh, I only see uh, this detail from the beginning. <sighs> I already see the problem here, but as usual. So you saw me then, too. Of course. I remember that spiky hair anywhere. Spiky? <laughs> yeah, why is everyone after my hair? Like, seriously? I'm so... I'm not reading that. <laughs> the victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. The girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with that weapon. I Wait, I'm supposed to be pressing stuff. <laughs> The right, as in your right, as you looked uh, from the hotel. What hand do I hold my knife in again? Right, it was my right hand. What? <laughs> okay. 
hippie clothes. How convenient for you to remember her hippie clothes. That's what you, I mean, that's what she said she was wearing. That's what she was wearing. Oh, and her hair was all done up like a bun. What happened then? We're getting nowhere here. But let's keep going and see what happens. She picked it up from the desk. What sort of weapon was it? That clock, uh, the statuary clock, the thinker, I think. Um. Okay, so that was the end of the testimony right there. And yeah, I see the problem with this. So, how did you... It doesn't say anything about clock. Or does it? Well, it actually says here, but she, does she know that? Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, this is it right here. <laughs> what you said just now was quite revealing. <laughs> revealing you? No. You just said that this statue of the thinker was a clock. But there's no way uh, of knowing that just by looking at it. <clears throat> Another person. Yeah, this is the same shit that we got the other guy on in the last case. Recently called this a clock too. And he was found guilty of murder. I mean, really. <clears throat> Did you not watch the previous trial, girl? Can you explain how you know this, uh, was a clock? The witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Oh. But your questions are, but questions are, are, all I have, your honor. <laughs> Jeez. And as you may recall, I've caught murderers with uh, these questions before. Well, only once. Yeah, murder. Just murderer. Objection sustained. You may continue to question the witness. I was close. So, what happens now? What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? Because uh, I heard it. Yes, I heard the. I heard it say the time. So you've been to the law offices, uh, law offices of Fay and Co. I heard it from my hotel room. No, you didn't. How can you? Even if it. Okay. <laughs> I, I, okay, like, um, uh, so we already know, like, you already know that. Uh, all right, the office is very close to the hotel. It was across the street. You couldn't hear that thing. Are you satisfied? Nope, Your Honor. There is a very, a very big fucking problem with that. Um, it couldn't have rung. I would say she couldn't have heard it. Both of those are true. But anyway. <clears throat> it's inconceivable. <laughs> inconceivable. That, um, <clears throat> the clock in question rang because it's empty. How could you possibly just take a look right now? <clears throat> See anything interesting, Your Honor? This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big, fat liar. Fat? <laughs> big? <laughs> Old iron? Slow? Well, Miss May... Uh oh, quite a show you've put on. Yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> I wanted to say real quick, like, even if the clock was working, how the, in the blue hell could she hear it across 
a busy city street. <laughs> like, seriously? I mean, you can't ask me to swallow that. I'm sorry. Like, across the street. Even if it was, even if it wasn't like a city street, it's a clock. <laughs> okay. He knew the clock was empty. Somehow he knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty. As you say, it can't ring. When was the clock removed? If it was after the witness heard the clock, then uh, there was there was no contradiction. <clears throat> Uh, well, Mr. Wright, can you prove uh, the clockwork was removed? Yes, I can. Impossible, of course. I have proof. Proof is everything. And now I'll show you the proof you like so much. Um, uh, evidence that proves the clockwork was removed. So yeah, it's this right here. Uh, my this clock makes it look like a statue thinker. I should probably tell you the clock isn't talking right now. I think the clock will come. Boom. Take a look at this. Look at this phone. <laughs> That's a very cute cell phone. You have a girly phone. Wait, this is my phone. Listen, this is, de this is the defendant's cell phone, and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. The defense of <laughs> Edgeworth, that isn't a good look for you. Defendant's cell phone, that this wasn't brought to my attention. Perhaps D Detective Gumshoe overlooked it. Mm, the good detective better remember he's up for evaluation soon. I gotta say, I'm starting to feel bad for the big fella. So you just want me to hold on to the thinker for you then? If you could. I should probably tell you the clock isn't talking right now. Not working, that's lame. Had to take the clockwork out, sorry. September 5th, uh, 9.27 AM. I think this makes it clear the clockwork was already gone, um, uh, by the time with this this was recorded. <laughs> well, Miss May, would you care to explain to the, to this to the court? Just how did you know that this weapon was a clock? Well, isn't it obvious? I saw that clock before. Um, what store was it again? I go to Sony Mini. I forgot. Yes. Another piece of evidence already submitted to the court. Yeah, this clock is two of a kind, like <laughs> made by Larry Butts. This clock was never in any store, ever. A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world. And the one that isn't here is in police custody. Custody. Yeah, two of a kind. Two of a kind. <laughs> Everything is sold in stores. Oh, God. Miss May, I think it's high time you went... I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh, excuses, excuses not on sale. Uh, not on sale today? I'm like, just like... Whoa. 